Hello, welcome back to Fish Looker. A fantastic morning out on the boat. Now we're we're out early morning. We're just trying to feather up a bit of a bit of fresh bait. I've already had a couple of three mackerel here, and then we're going to head out to some wrecks. I'm going to try drifting them first, and then if the conditions are right, I'm going to try and anchor up on a new wreck just out in the bay. Now all I'm fishing is just mackerel tinsels. This is a bit heavy, but this is the gear that I'm going to be using later on. And uh, I all I'm, you can't beat fresh bait. I actually haven't brought any bait with me today, so all the fish, all the bait that I'm going to be using. Oh, I've just lost one on surface. That's a good live bait size, actually. I didn't bring any bait with me today, I just brought me rigs and my rods. So everything I'm going to use today, I've caught today. So I had to go with that on the way down. And when I'm, when I'm feathering like that, I always keep my thumb on the spool. Like every, I don't know, every 10 yards, give it a stop, give it a bounce, give it a stop, give it a bounce all the way to the bottom and do the same all the way back. That way you search out the entire water column looking for the fish. got a little bit of a steam so if I don't pick any more fish up in the next five two minutes I'll keep on going I've got some mackerel to get me started and then I will hopefully be drifting over the rough ground and a wreck with some baited feathers on to try and catch a pouting or a whiting there we go oh that's better Oh, that's what we wanted. Got a full string of biggins there. Well, that's it. That's bait sorted. It's a full string of four. Four good mackerel there. Meanwhile, he's busy flapping around, making the boat all nice and dirty. Oh, here they are, all good ones. <laughs> that's bait taken care of. Perfect. You'll notice when I'm steaming, I always bring the rod up to there, then wrap the weight around the handle so it keeps it all nice and tidy when you're steaming. There we go, <laughs> let's get to them wrecks. We've got to the area where I wanted to fish. We're just drifting over a wreck now, and unfortunately, I've come out to two. Both of them, like everything else in the ocean at the moment, it's got fishing gear on it. Now uh, it looks like a net shot right alongside the wreck. So unfortunately, I'm going, just going to test it out now. I'm just going to drop down, and if I lose this gear straight away, I'm going to have to move to another one, try and find another one that hasn't got any fishing gear on it. Um, I was having a look on the way out past a couple of wrecks, every single one of them. I mean, bearing in mind, I've, I've steamed already. I've steamed about 15 miles, and every wreck I could find in shore has got fishing gear on it. All I'm doing now is I've got me got me uh, mackerel feathers that I had on earlier and I've put a little bit of the fresh mackerel that I've just caught. Just some little tiny strips on it. I'm just going to try and bump down over the wreck and see if there's any pouting or waiting. Because it's always good to try and find out what type of life is living on a wreck. Because if you haven't got little fish living there, you won't have big fish living there. Because the big fish need to eat the little fish. What? That's more like a ling. <laughs> oh, bitten me off. Yeah, well, there are fish there. I think I'll come up now and I'll have one of my hooks missing. Well, I know there's one fish there at least. It's a problem with only fishing light feathers like that. The line's only about 50 or 60 pound. Fishing for ling you need 100 or more, just because their teeth are so sharp. 
We're drifting at about a knot, which is a little bit fast. Hopefully as the tide dies down, we'll get to spend more time on top of the wreck. I'm expecting now when I wind up for one of my feathers to be missing. The water's really poor quality at the minute. Got loads of like snotty cobwebs in it. Currently in 240 feet of water. It's quite a bit of winding to do. Yeah look, what did I say? Been bitten off by a link. What I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna switch around to one of my wrecking rigs. I'm gonna bait it up with some fresh mackerel and I'm gonna have that drift again. See if I can't get hold of that link. Hey, you can see, that's one of my wrecking rigs. Now I'll put a link into here on how to make these, but all it is, and is that's a, uh, I think it's a Tenno Cox and Roll meat hook. And I've just put a couple of slithers of that mackerel on that I've just caught, and a 10 ounce lead on the bottom. You need extra, you need the extra lead, just because you've got more, um, got more tackle in the water which drags more tide. I had an 8 ounce on before than that, this might still be a bit lighter, I might have to switch it to a 12. But a uh, much stronger line because the lingam conger that you're hoping to catch just bite through like they did with that mackerel trace. Just coming down onto the wreck now. Still drifting at a knot, we are a little bit fast. The risk of drifting really fast is just that you get snagged into the wreck, but also that is that you don't spend as much time on the wreck as if you're going slowly. I'm just gently bumping like that. I don't want to drag because if I come up to a piece of snag like that, I'll just get bound into it. So just gently bumping on it, you're waiting for that bite. You want to get the hook set and you want to get it out of there quick. Because they live down in the snaggiest, roughest part of the wreck. They'll come out for your bait and they'll try and get straight back in there. Oh, I missed it. Give it a little bit of line, see if I can, see if it'll come back to it. Nah, I think I've missed my chance. Put a heavier lead on and go back for another go. You see how I've got that little link at the bottom of this holding onto the lead? That's like a strong weak link. It's strong enough that it'll hold it, but it's weaker than the rest of the gear that I'm using. So if I do come caught in the, in the wreck with the lead, all it'll do is that weak link will give eventually. Of course we're drifting a little bit fast, so we'll just give a little kick of stone. Just to try and give me that extra time to get down there onto the wreck. You can see the fishing gear in the background maybe. Fishing gear is on the west side of the wreck. I'm drifting down the east side of the wreck. Just coming up to it now. It's not a big one though. Be a pouting or a waiting. Waiting for that proper, proper big nod. I'm just moving through it too fast. Yeah, them baits are getting chewed. Go for one last pass, then we'll think about something else. We'll have this one last drift over the top, and 
I'll say about trying to put the hook down for a couple of hours. We've still got a bit of the ebb going on. I planned on drifting until low water slack and as soon as it started to flood I was going to put the anchor down but I might have to do it a little bit early and just re-anchor. There's a big flock of what looks like shearwaters sat on the water over there and there's probably about 60 of them. Just coming onto the wreck now. Try and give myself a little bit more time over the wreck. See that flock of birds in the background now. See about putting an anchor down. Right, finally managed to get the anchor down. Doesn't matter how you arrange it or how you tie up your anchor rope, it will always, always get in a tangle. <laughs> Talk about frustrating. Now the wreck is actually just there behind us. Now I'm hoping that as the wind swings around that way it will push us onto the wreck and away from the fishing gear. But we will see, <laughs> we will see how that works out. God, I'm all sweaty now. For those of you who want to know, like I say, I'm in 230 feet of water and I let out 500 feet of rope. I was going to say, I'll leave this rod here and I'll set the other one up. Yeah, that's a fish, that. First 10 seconds and 20 feet is crucial because you need to get it up away from the wreck. I'd like to say because it was on the bait so quick that it'll be a link. Though it's a bit of a twangy fight, a bit like a small eel. Looks like a ling. Oh, talk about that for a first fish. Well, consider that being a success. How about that for a first fish? There's a top hook of the wrecking rig, just like I said, just as designed. Just turn the hook. Look at that. Easily double figures. I'd say maybe 12, 13 pound. If you can see all these teeth in here. There, look. That's why you need to use strong line. That's why it just bit that little trace off earlier. What oh, cracker! First fish, first drop. Ha. Now Ling, unfortunately, they don't go back well. The swim bladders blow and that's it, they're knackered. So that one's gonna be going for the table. We are swinging around a little bit. We are getting closer to that net. Well hang on, we'll give it we'll give it half an hour. I might have to re-anchor. If that wind doesn't swing round in time, I might have to re-anchor. But there you go. <laughs> and all that was, once it's once I've untangled it, it all snarled me up. Oh, what a bugger. Hey, 
you see, all it was was just the top hook of my wrecking rig, which was 10 0 Cox and Roll meat hook. Fantastically strong, really sharp. Just a little bit of fresh mackerel on it. There we are, it's ready to go back down again. I was just about to say we're going to pull the anchor up and re anchor. Just start getting a bite on this one here. Let's see if I can show you the bite. It's not a big bite. But that doesn't mean to say it's not a big fish. Conger can be anything from like rod being pulled over the side to like the tiniest little mouthing of a bait and they'll just hold it in their mouth and sit there and they chew it and swallow it. I personally I think this is like a pouting or a whiting. Just something small has found it. But you should always treat it as if it is a big fish. Because that, that one time when you're like, ah, and you just strike it, it'll end up being a monster and you'll, you'll mess it up. We do have, I think he's a minky whale around us, because every now and again I just keep carrying like a, and just seeing like the, a back, like the back of a, a, a whale or something. It's maybe about 200 yards away from us now. It's only somewhat small. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it take home my bait. Let's uh, get up and re anchor. I'm fishing this rod on a wrecking rig. I'm going to fish the other rod on a running ledger. I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you my setup. It's only really simple, but you only want to keep it really simple. You want to have as little, a little as possible down there in the wreck. Not only because the fewer components, the fewer fewer things you've got to get snagged, but also the fewer components, if you do get snagged, the less you lose. I've let that go a little bit further back in the tide, kept holding it back rather than letting it drop quickly, just to see if I can sit it like back onto the wreck. This is my setup. All I've got is I've just got a Spectra braid on there with a hundred pound uh, Rovex 10 times rubbing leader. And you can see there, look, I've just got a zip slider between two beads. The reason I have two beads, not only so this bead will kind of slow it down from sliding up the line, this, one, this bead here protects the knot from the lid sliding up and down. And I've got a Cox and Roll number five coast lock swivel. These are really strong. You just need really strong tackle for this. And what I do is I always have a load of pre-tied rigs in like a little wallet like this. Because you will inevitably you will lose gear fishing in wrecks. I don't want to be messing around tying more gear. I want to be able to just take one out, just put one straight on. And then when you're sat like a little bit of a lull you can potentially tie more. This will do, mate. Same again. 10 0 Cox and Ball meat hook. I do really like these just because they're, they're mega strong. And all I've done is I've just knotted with the uh, like three turn noose knot. This is 300 pound triple fish. Now you might not have an awful lot of confidence knotting like 300 pound line. I have I have got a video with some great knots for heavy line like this. I'm, I've got no problem knotting this. I've got quite a lot of faith in it as well. And ending in. The reason I knot it at that end is because that's the end that's going to get the most damage. So I might have to cut it and retie it. This end here, you're unlikely to see damage up here, so I've put a crimp on there with a Flemish eye and just put a bit of heat shrink over. You don't have to go that that far into it, you could just tie it. And all you do is you just clip it on like that. I like these detachable hook lengths because when you get a good fish, all you want to do is you just unclip the hook length, put the rod up out of the way, and then you can deal with the fish. So you've not got like a rod banging around as the fish is thrashing around. Again, I'm going to use another 10 ounce lead, just so I can drop it back a little bit. And we 
with this one. Oh, there's a fish. That's a proper fish bite, that one. Oh, it's dropped it. Drop it back down. It was either a little eel or a little ling. They didn't quite have it properly in its mouth. It's not a problem dropping straight back down again because if you've got, I've got two baits on there. Because you might not even catch the same fish that's just giving you a bite. But there will be other fish down there and one fish thrashing around on a bait does attract more. I'm sure you're really quick how I'm hooking these baits. That's like a mackerel flapper almost. All I'm going to do there. Just like that. Now this is a big bait. With a big bait you've got to like properly take it in its mouth. Fish is back. No, he took the rod over then. No, it is still there. Missed it. Whatever it is, it is still down there, still playing at it. It probably is like a little ling or a little conger. Aggressive enough to take the bait, but not big enough to properly get it in its mouth. It's still playing. Give it a little bit of line. In time, that one's reached the bottom. Like I say, I'm expecting Ling on this one and Congo on the other one. Although they do catch, reckon rigs do catch Congo and running ledges do catch Ling. Generally, the two baits fluttering around on the wrecking rig seems to attract the Ling better. And because the running ledger is properly tight on the bottom, that's the one that usually gets you your congas. Probably savaged all my baits away now. Oh no, still there. I think it's going to be one of those days today. We've now got somebody that has set up a drift fishing on my anchor boy. I'll turn the camera around in a minute, I'll show you. But it just. For a start, they're going to end up losing all the gear in my anchor rope, and if they end up pulling my anchor out, I'll be less than impressed. Bearing in mind, that's where my anchor is. A little conger eel. You got some type of idea about how close he was to me, didn't you? I think you got the picture. Just using common sense. You could see I was anchored up. What was he going to do? All you do to turn him out, you can turn the hook like that and get a T-bar in it. And you use the fish's own weight to pop the hook out. Now we were actually getting a bite on the running ledger. It could have just been 
that these two lines were quite close to each other and as that fish was fighting on the way up it was knocking the line. Of course I did see when I was winding this fish up there was like the odd. Now you might have seen with that eel it did put up a bit of a fight to start with. And then once I managed to get its head going in one direction, if you can keep it going in that direction and just keep a, a real steady wind on them, sometimes you can guide them straight up to the boat. One thing with these, you can't be frightened of them. You've just got to get hold of them. But <laughs> they are slippery. Slippery as an eel, would you believe it? There you go. You've been to double figures, you'll be. Might be ten pound. See they do not mess about at all, straight back. You might have noticed as I was saying with the wrecking rigs, they usually catch ling, but they do catch conger. And the running ledgers generally catch more conger, plus the bait is on the bottom. You notice that fish came on the bottom hook of that. So the bait closer to the bottom got the conger, and the ling come on the top hook, which is the hook, the, the bait above. We have got a fish playing with this. I'm reluctant to do anything yet because it could be a really good one and if you remember it is a massive bait refresh this bait these don't have to be fancy or streamlined baits but you don't want massive bulky ones just because it adds more drag in the tide. See how like that one's hooked onto itself again? Try that again. This rod at the back is just gently, gently angled away. I've let it let it run back a bit. What I'm looking for there, as you can see, it's just slowly bobbing as the boat bounces around. And what you're looking for is either to, when it bobs, it stays down, or anything out of sequence. So if it's rocking on the boat like that, and all of a sudden it goes, that's a bite, or even a sharp one. But usually baits like that, it's a pull away bite. Where there'll just be nothing and all of a sudden it'll just hoop over and start going. And all that is, it's an eel that's picked it up, got it in its mouth and it's turned round and gone. Not an awful lot of fight in this, but give, give a good initial bite. I think I might have picked up the other line. Oh, it's woke up a bit now. It's another cracking link. Another beauty. He's even bigger than the last. He might go. In fact, I'll get him on the scales. Properly swallowed that bait, though. Look. See all the teeth. Did a bait in there. This is another beauty of this rig. Because all I'm going to do here. Oh, not 
not right now because we're going to fish on this other rock. That was a good conga bite, that. Give it a chance to have one more knock while I'm talking to you. Anyway, like I was saying, because the hook's down deep in that ling, what you do is you go in through the gill, pull the hook out, take the hook off the trace, and then pull the trace out the mouth. It's a fine line, you've got to leave them long enough to take the bait, but if you leave them too long, they'll go in a hole. Give this a little tug and just see what happens. Whatever it was, didn't like the look of it. But it was a brilliant bite, that. Just exactly as, as, as I described, just went. And then went down again. It's back. I'm going to change that wrecking rig off now, because... I don't really want to catch any more ling. Must just be little fish playing with this. Because they're not having it. Meanwhile, this ling's turned the back of my boat into a... Just a <laughs> slimy mess. As you can see now, the wind's dropped right off. So, we are at the mercy of what little tide there is. Unfortunately, you've just got to fish it out like this until like one decides what it wants to do, whether or not the tide picks up or the wind picks up. Otherwise, you're just going to end up re-anchoring about four times. So I'll take this down to weigh this ling. See there, they're on zero. Fifteen. Ah, uh, just over. Maybe fifteen and a half. When I got him on deck, he's, when I brought him up, his belly was fat. Fat as hell. As soon as I got him on deck, he just went bleh. Just burped up a load of water. <laughs> so I was like, alright. That's why he weighed more. Not bad day skills. A couple of years back when I started started properly targeting like congas and, and ling up big wrecks. I kept catching fish that were too big for the scales that I had. So just uh, I thought right well enough's enough. I think these go these go to hundred pounds. I think I'm, I don't know if you heard that but that was a tuna. <laughs> now these go to hundred pound. So if I catch something that big I'll be lucky. That's all they are. Keep getting, keep getting like good fish bites on, on a running ledger, and then just nothing. I think I'm going to bring it up in a minute and just change the bait over for a fresh one. Usually ling will go and go and go and go. They won't, they won't like mouth and play and it's a ling, it'll have it and it'll have it until it's hooked or until the bait's gone. So when it bites like that and then goes away, you'd like to think that it would be a conger eel. Again, we have another one where someone's obviously seen me and thought they'd steam right up to me. Days. See the dolphins at the back of us here? Been bombing around all morning. 
used to pod of common dolphins. And everywhere there's five here, a few there. I love them, I think they're brilliant. I've re-anchored us and the wreck is pretty much right now, 50 feet away at the back of the boat there. So I've trotted the trotted the lines back a bit. Well, I mean we're pretty much on slack water now. So I reckon we'll have probably another another half an hour or 20 minutes before it before it changes again. We'll have to re-anchor again. God, now that wind's died off. It's glorious. The very slack tides at the minute. A nice set of neap tides, which is what you want for uh, for ling and conger fishing. Don't really want big tides. I don't know if you can see that white boat in the distance there. All the birds working round, but there's tuna busting all around it. You can see them because it's not like a sleek entrance like these dolphins. It's like a proper. See the bite? Nodding away. I don't know, I was going to call it and say Ling. But every now and again it feels like, like that, it feels like a conga. Bit of colour now. Conga reel. A very motley dark one. Oh, this lad's been in the wars. So you look hooked perfectly in the bottom jaw. I think this boy's seen a hook before. See there, look, he's got a bit of a. That was where my hook was. Got another scar on his mouth there, look. Like he's been. Been hooked before, and a scar on his side like he's had a gaff in him. Another conga's had hold of him. Can you see them scars? Now I was gonna switch. I was gonna switch that wrecking rig over to a running ledger, but I'm glad I didn't. Kind of thought it'll still pick up congas and it has getting quite a good bite on the running ledger down here. Now you saw it, I lowered the running ledger right off the back of the boat and you saw that I threw this one over there. Not only so I'm covering a little bit more area because it's, it's a decent sized wreck, but also I don't want the baits too close to each other. So that if I hook a fish, it doesn't want to tangle up. I'm hoping we've finally found something on the running ledger. Though with it being slack water now, it's probably going to be a dogfish.
sounds like a bit of fish. It's the first one to try and go back down anyway. That is a monster of a ling. <laughs> You're a big old girl. You can see there in the distance what's floated up. Two waiting that he would swallowed. See the hook there, its mouth. There you go. Size that mouth. I know he'll be in the twenties. A fat gut on him. And he's just spat out two fish up my up. He had been playing with that for a while. I had my lead off, look. It's a shame. There you go, there's a little strap eel. Again, hooked perfectly in the bottom jaw. A little growling. Thank you, turned. Mm. Right, I'll get a weight on that thing. If you can see there, call that twenty four. Twenty-three, conservative twenty-three. Right, well, we've done, we've done all right. <laughs> we'd uh, that's three double figure ling. We had like a twelve, a fourteen, and like a twenty, twenty-three. They're um, you see the size of it. It's an absolute bruiser, isn't it? Look, see them teeth in there. They're just wick. That's why. That's why you need strong line. Get the fat gut on it. Now, unfortunately, every single one of those ling that I've caught, you've seen its swim bladder's blown out. So I can't put it back. I like to put most of my fish back if I can. Um, because this wreck seems to have a lot of ling on it. I mean, I am getting the congas, but they're only little tiny ones. I think the ling are just faster on the bait. I don't want to catch and kill any more ling. So I'm actually gonna, gonna call it a day. Um, <laughs> it seems strange that you're leaving because you're catching too many fish but I don't want to kill more than what I need and I've already got more than what I need so I've um, aye, neap tides, we're slack water tides just starting to turn now as you can see it's swinging me around, my phone's going mad I'll turn that off before someone starts phoning me
The all we used there was uh, my wrecking rig absolutely nailed it today. I think I out caught the other rig like two to one. I mean although it did have two hooks on it, <laughs> it's still out caught. The running ledger was just, just getting hammered by the little fish. Uh, we did we did catch conger on it. Um, got a lot of whiting and pouting down there, which is a good sign. I'll um, I'll come back and I'll try this wreck on another day. Um, but I think from now on it's going to be known as my ling wreck. It wasn't the ideal one because the one that I wanted to go to just had too much fishing gear on. And I don't know if you can see the fishing gear behind me. I've got fishing gear on one side of the wreck. So as the tide turns, I can't anchor the opposite side of the wreck because there's fishing gear there. We, um, I'll put links in here to the rigs. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one.